This is a 50 cal slap tracer and this is 6 inches of mild steel. Does it have any chance of making it through this much or will it be stopped by an even thinner amount of steel? Which is exactly what we're going to find out after we figure out how much it takes to stop a more common 50 BMG round. This is a 750 grain AMAX precision loaded by Desert Tech and although it is one of the best long range bullets for the 50 BMG out there, not exactly sure how well it's going to do on mild steel with this giant aluminum tip. So that's why we're going to be starting things off pretty light with a half inch piece of mild steel. Holy shiteballs, did it fling that steel good. I mean, it landed, you know, 10 feet away from the wall over there. Anyway, what do we have here? Oh, that is a uh, pretty interesting results. It looks like, you know, if it wasn't supported by the uh, wall down here, it would have punched through, but barely. Still, if that was in Steel Sled 4.2, I can almost guarantee it would have punched out that wad fully, but I just didn't want to destroy Steel Sled 4.2, so how's about we step it up another eighth inch to a five eighth inch piece of mild steel, and this time around, we are not going to have it, holy shit, this is hot, we are not going to have it fully supported to give it the best chance possible of going through. I mean, when it comes to armor piercing rounds, the wall really doesn't matter a whole lot because they're just going to go straight through that too, but traditional bullets really don't work like that on mild steel. They usually just shear out a, a giant wad of the steel, so let's see if it can make it through five eighths of an inch. <sighs> You'll just have to give me a minute. Saw a bug go into the chamber, so I decided to pull the bolt out to get it out of there, and of course I dropped a freaking bolt in the sand. Luckily, I always keep a little Otis cleaning kit in my range bag, because if something is going to go wrong out here, it is going to go freaking wrong 100% of the time. And I've been using their products, not just their 50 cal stuff, almost exclusively ever since I bought one of their mini kits back at Walmart, you know, something like 10 years ago. So whenever Otis reached out to me about sponsoring a video, it was a no-brainer. But one of their cleaning products that I use more so than anything else at the range that most people probably don't even think about are their lead wipes. I go through these things like candy. I mean, I don't mind getting my hands dirty for sure, but whenever it comes time to eat lunch or drive home, rusty lead covered hands aren't exactly ideal for my health. So if you spend any amount of time at the range, I would highly recommend them. Also, Otis told me that Banana 15 saves 15% off of any of their products using the link in the description below, and it really helps out the channel. Good as new. What in the absolute hell was that? Was that the tip that caused all that smoke or what? That was nuts. Oh no, perhaps my least favorite part of the day is looking to see if the camera survived. Oh, okay. Okay, we are good. And let us check out to see what happened on this. St oh crap. Oh crap. Look, I mean, it left a massive, and I mean massive crater right there. Definitely thumb worthy. I mean, any person's thumb basically could fit in that. But it absolutely sucks on 5 eighths of an inch. I just, I don't understand how 5 eighths of an inch can stop, you know, 12,000 foot pounds or whatever muzzle energy that thing is putting out. It just doesn't make any sense to me, so let me try that one more time. And something else that doesn't make sense to me is how Desert Tech got this HTI so lightweight. I mean, it still weighs around 20 pounds naked, but relative to other 50 BMG setups out there, I believe this is actually the lightest and most compact package out there. I mean, I could be wrong on that, but that probably has a lot to do with why the Ukrainian snipers chose this as their anti-material sniping rifle. I mean, I'm not sure if they're suppressing it or not, but uh, even with this suppressor right here. It's still over an inch shorter than the Barrett M82A1 naked. Here's that velocity if you're curious. I mean, pretty much right on the money. I just can't believe how much flashing occurs with what I believe is the tip. I mean, that is better than some freaking API bullets that I've shot before. Nuts. And let's check out the steel, even though I can already tell I'm going to be very disappointed. And Terry, are you ever going to stand in this episode? My gosh. <laughs> let's check it out. That looks like a mirror image for the most part. This is a very, very hot plate, but there is the second one, and it looks identical to the first one. I just don't understand how 5A7 an inch can eat, you know, I think we proved that it was around 12,000 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. It just doesn't make any sense. But, I mean, there's no denying it at this point. Five-eighths of an inch of mild steel will stop just about any standard 50 BMG round out there. You know, out of a 29-inch barrel at least. But that leaves our main event. Our 4,000 feet a second extra spicy special of the day. You heard that correctly. This 355 grain, 30 caliber solid tungsten rod is rated for 4,000 feet a second out of a 45-inch modus at least. So I'm really not sure what type of velocity to expect out of our short 29 incher. Short? What I wouldn't give for even a fifth of that. Me too, and to be completely honest with you, I'm not even sure if we're gonna get a velocity reading. I mean, I have two separate chronographs to try and get as accurate as possible, but I can't promise anything. One thing I am sure of though is that the slap likes its steel like it likes its women.
thick. Which is precisely why we're starting off with a thickness of steel that I don't ever recall using on this channel. I could be wrong about that. But we are starting off with two inches of mild steel. Nah, I'm just kidding. I don't think this lap is interested in women. I just don't have any to waste. But these authentic 50 cal slap tracer rounds are only possible thanks to my friend Dozer Munitions. In case you don't know, slaps can be extremely, extremely dangerous or even potentially lethal to the user. If, number one, you don't take off your muzzle device, so please help remind me to do that. And number two, which is the primary one, is if you get scammed into fakes. Luckily, Dozer Munitions has a great video on how to spot fakes, so let's get to shooting. <laughs> Can't wait to see this. Wait, what was that? Uh, uh, nothing, please continue. Okay, wait. Uh, oh my gosh, Bam, you were gonna let me shoot with that suppressor on the end. Gosh damn it. Well, Pam, I don't intend on blowing up today, although my shoulder might. I mean, I think it's already there. I just better double up on my hearing protection as well. Here's to nothing. I think I'm alive right now, although my shoulder definitely is not. That was the most intense recoil I think I have ever felt. I don't know how many of these I can stomach, but uh, we will see. <laughs> not like I have that many to stomach in the first place. I mean, I don't know how accurate this is, but here's the number we got. And what did we get? Oh. <laughs> Oh. oh, I was aiming right here for the center of this plate. This is a 10 by 10 plate, and uh, obviously the windage was pretty good, but the elevation, I mean, it shot way up five inches, which, I mean, at least it hit the plate at all, but uh, that caused it to yaw out the top there, and there is no telling if that would have went through two inches or not, but I'm pretty sure it would have. So we are stepping up our thickness game another half inch to two and a half inches of mild steel. I know for a fact we have never handled anything this thick on this channel before. Speak for yourself. I mean, I don't have to shoot another one if you don't want me to. I'm plenty good with saying that it would go through two inches, and then that's it. You know, I... Figures. What else is on? Okay, fine. I don't even know if the camera is doing it justice, how unbelievably insane the recoil is on this thing. I mean, a flinch would be in short order, but at 95 smackaroos, or should I say slapperoos, I can't really develop a flinch. I don't know if you're going to believe this, because I sure don't. Look at how freaking consistent these are. Holy shitballs. And what is this I see? Is it part of the slap round? Could it be? Sorry, I don't want to run too much. But yes, this is part of the slap round right here. I didn't realize that it sheared off the uh, projectile that quickly. I mean, we're probably about, you know, 20. 25 yards or so. Definitely coming in high, although I accommodated for it a little better this time around, and uh, I, somehow I got back on target quick enough to just see the end of the trace go away. That was pretty cool looking through the scope, but I can't tell if this actually went through or not. Let me check the pinky test real quick, and oh my gosh, that has to be exactly a 30 caliber hole. That is freaking tiny right there. But enough messing around. It is the moment of truth time. Let us see what happened and on the back, absolutely nothing. <sighs> Well, that's disappointing. See, that's why you never listen to your shoulder, because my shoulder was definitely telling me it went through, but yeah, I guess it's not always right. So for the first time in a while, we're going to need to step it down, maybe back down to the two inch plate that we shot before. I don't know if you can see it or not, but apparently there is a cavity at the base of the uh, tungsten projectile that holds the tracer compound. I guess that's what I was seeing whenever I saw this, or whenever I got back on target with the scope. Well, here goes nothing. Two inches right here. Oh, that's a little slippery with the paint. Holy shit. Okay, here's the deal. I think I'm developing a concussion, and you you don't want to see me in any sort of pain, right? Like, I don't need to shoot another one of these, right? Wrong! Oh. oh my gosh, that is so, so, so freaking bad. I don't know. I hope the camera shows how bad it is. There we go. That one stepped it up, you know, a decent amount. I'm telling you, I don't know how it's possible, but somehow I saw the trace again through the scope. You saw it too, buddy? Wait. Terry, are you going to stand up at all during this episode? Holy shite balls. But anyway, let's check out. Oh, oh, <laughs> my shoulder told me it was going through two inches as well. And there is a very nice bulge back there. But uh, obviously it did not go through two inches. Let's see what the projectile looks like. Yeah, pretty similar to two and a half inches. Let me get my pinky in. Yes. I don't know why I made that noise. It is freaking terrible. <laughs> I truly never thought I'd have to say it two times in a row. But let's step it down again. And this time. 
time, I believe it is the last stop on the train because I literally only have one more bullet. So it's definitely the last stop on the train. <laughs> Our last stop being a one and three quarter inch piece of mild steel. If it can't make it through this, I, I don't know anymore. Like if a 50 BMG slap round can't make it through one and three quarter inches, it might as well not even exist. Somewhat of a harsh thing to say, I know, but you're burning a lot of powder. You're burning a lot of shoulder as well, especially if you're like me shooting it without a freaking muzzle brake. So if it can't make it through one and three quarter inches, you might as well just go with a 338 Lapua. Uh, you pronounced it wrong. It's Lapua. And by the way, I think I deserve a like and subscribe for shooting this many without a freaking muzzle brake. <laughs> Please. The last one. Oh, shit. Oh, I am glad I'm done because I think I am experiencing some concussion-like symptoms. I don't know. I mean, I'm seeing like two dragons over there. No, just kidding. It's not that bad, but it's still freaking terrible. All right, it looks like we have all the ingredients in the soup. I mean, it's not going 4,000 feet a second, but that one was definitely cooking compared to the first two. Guys, I don't know how Vortex could have possibly rated this Razor Gen 3 for a slap round fired out of a 50 BMG. This bird needs to shut up. Holy shit. With no muzzle brake. I mean, it has been holding up wonderfully somehow. That is just amazing, especially in these MDT rings right here. And and the other thing that really surprised me, not surprised me because I know they make great products, but this worn bipod is holding up like a champ. And Terry, buddy, any insight on what may have happened? Let's see. Oh, you've got to be fuck kidding me. You have got to be fuck kidding me. Let's just see. Oh, oh definitely the uh, same size hole as all the other pieces of steel. But how in the hell? Did that not go through one and three quarter inches of mild steel? Especially at 50 yards, like, holy shit. I just don't understand it, and I may have actually lied before. I have one more slap round that I thought I was saving for thumbnail images and stuff like that, but I need to get to the bottom of this. I need to figure out how much steel a slap round could go through. And I mean, one and a half inches of mild steel is still a giant chunk of steel. Not, I mean, you wouldn't think so for a 50 BMG, especially 50 BMG slap, or at least I wouldn't think so. But if it doesn't get through this, I mean, the slap is completely worthless. Just remember, this is for you guys. I don't want to shoot this. My shoulder definitely does not want to shoot this, so please enjoy. I would never enjoy your pain. Oh, well, here goes my shoulder. <coughs> this better be so freaking worth my shoulder holy shite balls i don't think i could handle more than five in a single day or probably a single month especially with all the other 50 bmg rounds that i shot today my shoulder is cooked cooked i say terry please please tell me it went through i don't care if you've been standing at all during this video just please tell me it went through what do you mean it was bad news wait what what are you talking oh Shit. Oh, shit. What in the absolute point is is the point of the slap round? What the hell am I going to do with these three inch plates? And remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas. This dog has been sitting in the forest for like seven hours and now he knows it's time to go home. What the hell is going on here?